Um, so this piece originally started as this. And this piece was also shown in my first solo show in Hazel Park. And some person that I did not know had asked me about it and I was talking about it. And I was like, you know, you ever see that and you just you can't get it right in your head. And, and he was like, yeah, okay, I get that. But what's with the kid or the person doing the cartwheel and the symbolism of the train? And you have to know because you know me well enough, I wasn't a swearer at that point. And it surprised me as much as it surprised my audience when I said, you know, adios motherfucker. And we both stood there and we're like, oh, like I didn't just say that. It's like, oh, I did just say that. And I think that's when my swearing really kind of amped up because we both laughed and it was good. So that piece then morphed into this piece after the divorce. And it's what I saw of him after, which if you know anything about narcissism, the only way to deal with this is to go no contact. So this was my reminder to myself to go no contact. So what I saw of him after, nothing. I saw nothing of him after. And for Sarah's show, she asked me to, you know, send all these pieces. And I was looking at this and I was like, okay, do I send all the flashcards? Because this piece is actually interchangeable. These flashcards are movable. Um, and I found more flashcards that really hit home with, I know what you did and I got out because that's really what this boils down to. And it shows the healing process. And I love that the art has morphed along with me to show that. So this piece now hangs in Sarah's gallery and it reads, I know what he did and I got out. Um, so I wanted to share those to show you how the art has evolved over the last few years. But then I wanted to go back because sometimes the art that's created in the moment is just for the moment. And there's been a lot of art in the process that I've destroyed. Um, this is one of them. And this was actually my very first assemblage that I ever created. And this was, was in response to my daughter, my kid um, being bullied at school. And it's a skateboard because they were into skateboarding at the time. And if you can, you can't really tell anymore, but down here at the base are the photographs because I had actually photographed all these kids. We knew them, they knew us. They were supposed to be our friends, um, but their photographs are down here in the base. <laughs> the Mean Girls, we'll call them. And then the pages that are on this are actually from the book Mean Girls. Um, you know, a lot of weight references and size references because you know how awful middle school girls can be. Um, but the title of this is, what did you just call me? And it says loser and snitch bitch. And that was what they had deemed my kid during, high, during middle school as the snitch bitch because she had told that they were picking on her. Um, the back of it though was completely different. I wanted them to have a spine and I wanted them to know their strength and their possibilities. So the back of this looked like this. Um, this piece has been destroyed. Um, my kid, as you know, has changed a lot since then, has grown a spine and everything else. Um, but that piece then morphed into this piece a couple of years ago. And this piece is in Sarah's gallery now, and this is called Weak Foundation. Um, which I love as I've been trying to rebuild my entire life, as you guys know. Um, I, the symbolism in this, because you guys know there's a story for everything. This house that's down here that's burnt. Um, my mom growing up had, um, in her head at least, assumed that we had been together in another life and that that life was cut short because the house we lived in had burnt. So the symbolism of this burnt house is the path that I have with my mother, which is at the base of this very weak foundation. Um, the explosive, these are actually candlesticks, but these explosive bombs represent my dad's um, anger and how quickly he could ignite. Um, and then this gold manta ray stingray was actually in relationship to a boy I was dating at the time who was the worst choice I've made since Tom. Um, so there's that. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to show you that some of the work transcends itself over time. 
Um, so when I was in the midst of what I call the peanut butter years and feeling very alone and isolated as that was the point of you know, the abuse to manipulate and isolate me from everyone. Um, I wasn't really fit for public consumption and I didn't go out much. And the times that I did go out, I went to work. And my job at the time was that of a nanny of a middle school girl. The irony in that is not lost on me, um, who also happened to be adopted and yammered. Like the minute I picked her up from school, she just blah, 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 blah. And, you know, after being with her a couple of years, I recognized the inflections in her voice and what was important to listen to and what wasn't. And most of it was just chatter. And to keep my self focused, I started a what I came to think of as a comfort collection. And it was a series of pillows that um, were meant to actually hold. I've come to learn that there actually are pillows that they make for heart patients, so that when they're coughing or they're having problems, they grab their pillow and they hug it. It was the same concept that I, and I didn't know about it at the time, that I started these pillows. And they're all hand embroidered. Um, this was the first one I created and it's called Pity Party. Because um, sometimes you just need to um, let yourself feel the feels. And so I created this one first and it, has the symbolism of the compass because I was pretty lost and trying to find my way, which makes absolute sense. Um, I'm not gonna show all of them in this series. I'm just gonna show a key few. Um, this second one in the series is called Get in the Lifeboat. Um, and this is directed towards my kid. Um, there was a lot of manipulation and again, isolation from my kid at the time. I had gone almost a year without seeing or talking to them because they were being manipulated on the back end. But the bear is always the mother, right? And the lifeboat, because we're lake people. Um, and there's a shark in the water, because there's a predator. Um, so this is getting the lifeboat. And you know, <laughs> you can't force somebody to do what they don't wanna do. But this piece was created during that time. Um, the second, <laughs> this third piece that I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you because I think it's just funny. Um, and I'm not sure what order to show this in. I'm going to show it this way. So this one is called Exit Stage Right. Um, this is a crow. A crows are death, right? Symbolism of death and leaving. Um, and this is the stage because most of my married life, I felt like I lived in a fishbowl and everybody was watching. Um, and this reference on the stage is my ex-husband. And I'm going to show you the reference picture that I used to create this symbol um, because I, when I saw it, thought it was funny. And um, the hair, the, the, the hair, right? So this is just what my ex-husband symbol has become. And it shows up in that particular pillow of exit stage right. Um, I'll go back and show you because it's funny. So this here is that. Um, not necessarily the last in the series, but again, to show the healing process that this has brought for me. Um, this last pillow I'll show is um, Vantage Point. And it was about this time that I was actually considering moving to Colorado. And I had had a shamic experience where the shaman had brought back lost pieces of my soul. It was a soul retrieval. And in that journey that they had taken, they had brought me back the totem animal of the goat. Um, and that's represented here. And the goat was a symbolism for me to get above it, to get a different perspective on how I was seeing how things were playing out. When you're in the thick of it, you just can't see clearly. So this was more of a note to myself to get above it and get a clearer view. Um, so with that, you know, I then did move to Colorado Springs. Yay! Um, and I started dating. And my therapist at the time had suggested I get on some dating sites so that I could learn to interact with men again. And so I did, I, I got on a dating site and it was worth the price of admission to just see what was out there. Um, I think the first site I was on, I never actually went on a date. It was just trying to interact. And this piece I created, that's called an uninter 
an unauthorized flirtation because that's what it felt like being on the dating site. You've got this women woman down here in the corner and you know I used to like from bed or my couch safely scroll and check it out. And it just seemed like there were all these characters vying for my attention. And I love that this guy's hand is in front of this guy's face and they're all trying to be charming and get my attention. And then over here on the sign, it says, watch out for the bull, right? And it to me, this man here seemed like she was he was whispering in her ear, like, oh, they're all crazy, you know, pick me, pick me. So this next series that I'm going to show is a nod to my dating life. And hopefully you can see this humor in it as well, because I really thought this was a funny experiment. Um, I did go out on a couple dates with this lovely human being. We're still friends. Uh, best dresser I have ever met in my life. Um, this one is called The Stage is Set. And you know, here he is all in his gear, ready to go. And I had shown this piece at a critique um, to get some feedback on it before I actually showed it. And they're like, okay, so you're dating and the stage is set and you're getting ready to go out into the world. And you know, somebody had asked, what's with the skunk? And I was like, well, this just stinks. This just stinks. This is not really where I thought I would be or where I want to be, but here we are, right? So the stage is set. Um, this is probably the first reflection of a date I had here in Colorado Springs. And this one is called, There's No Fool Like an Old Fool. Cause I was feeling pretty old and dating is weird when you're older. And I loved the interaction between this girl and the insert. She's on her little tippy toes and, you know, here's this gentleman trying to woo her and persuade her and stuff. And, and when I added the wax to this piece, um, the funny thing happens when you're working with vintage paper, you know, I was attracted to this image because of the interaction between the man and the woman. But when the wax was added, what is printed on the back of the vintage newspaper actually bleeds through. And that's what happened here. So this gentleman, soldier, person, face was not part of what I was expecting. This was a happy accident that showed up. And I love that he's kind of like, wait, dude, what are you doing? Like, there's kind of a guardian here. And it kind of, I look at it as representing, I was still pretty guarded and, and rightfully so, right? Um, <laughs> this is probably one of my favorites um, because I think we can all relate to this one. Um, this one's a dozen red flags. Right. Um, yes, there is not a dozen in his hand, but this monkey and all his showing upness um, and the flies, because this was shit. <laughs> um, but I, I really find humor in this one, uh, a dozen red flags. Um, and then we move on to this one, and it's titled Well Earned, um, because after you know, several dates and actually figuring out what I won't put up with, you kind of get to a point where you find maybe somebody that's decent and for you. So this was a well-earned journey um, to represent the healthy relationship that I'm able to find. Um, so, you know, those are some of the encaustic work. I want to go on and show you some more encaustic work. And this next, I'm going to call it a series, is more about um, finding myself in this process of moving and rebuilding and I don't know, maybe coming back to who I was maybe in college, because that's when I feel like I felt my most self. Um, so part of being here in Colorado Springs and then of course COVID hitting and it getting weird and not really having any grounding, I had started to practice uh, yoga online with the yoga studio that was actually in Royal Oak. So they had started to do online classes. So I practice online from my own apartment. And one of the things that the instructor used to say repeatedly, this was kind of his tagline, I guess, was little by little again and again. And, and that's what yoga practice is. You know, you show up on your mat and you go through the motions and some days you're a fucking rock star and other days it, everything hurts. 
So, but you keep showing up and eventually it does get easier. So that's what this piece is little by little again and again. And of course the you know, moth or butterfly that metamorphs into something that they weren't or could potentially be. I love the potential in this piece. So a little by little again and again. Um, and then this one, again, I, I enjoyed making it. I saw the humor in it. I thought it was very funny. Um, this one's titled, Interesting things, interesting things happen when the story changes. So part of the recovery process is unlearning, I'm not gonna say relearning, but unlearning what you think you know about yourself. And what I thought I knew about myself and who I really am weren't lining up. And you really need to be careful about how you talk to yourself and what you say, because what you say you become. So this piece was also um, a celebration. Uh, when I first moved here, my um, financial advisor gave me some advice. And his advice was, when I get to Colorado Springs, make sure I let my freak flag fly so that my people will find me. And that was this piece. Like, I, this is who I am. I'm not for everybody and that's okay. And it actually was really good advice because my people found me. Um, again, thinking about, you know, thinking differently and doing differently. Um, this is one of my newer pieces. Um, and this is called Training Your Brain. And just like having to meal plan or think ahead or be conscious of what you're thinking, um, it's really important what you say to yourself and how you feed your brain. And I've been really conscious about only getting or only allowing healthy things in and healthy people. And again, there's your, my goat um, reminding me to get above it and to get different perspectives. And part of that too, and the symbolization behind some of these silverware is that sometimes my own perception is not accurate. And then those days I go to my friends so that they can feed me what they know about me. So I love this piece and I love that you're all fucking here. <laughs> um, and then this last piece that I wanna show, and it's entitled Learning to Be Me Again. And I love the symbolism in this. Again, the crow, the death, the moving on, the metamorphosis. Um, the monkey on the shoulder, I had actually gone back and had another soul retrieval um, after I had been given the goat with the same woman. And she, this time she brought me back the monkey. And the monkey was a symbolization for me to start to have fun and to remember to bring in play and joy back into my life. So I've got this monkey on my shoulder whispering in my ear, Are you, is this fun? Because if it's not fun, you shouldn't be here, right? And these little skeleton birds down here, um, represent not just learning to be me, but learning to hold boundaries. Um, because these hungry little mouse are going to want and want and want and want and take. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing to give, but you gotta be careful where, to, where and when to draw the boundaries. So these little hungry birds are down here to remind me to keep healthy boundaries with those that might try to take more than I'm willing to give. So um, I was nervous, so I talked really freaking fast. Um, I have extra photos. We can open it up to questions. We can just start to talk. I don't know how you guys want to do this, but I'm open. Sarah, if there's anything that you want me specifically to talk about in, as far as pieces that might have got some attention at the sh show, I'm happy to do that too. I'm unmuting myself. Hold on just a second. Start video. Hello. Thank you. That was lovely. Um, <laughs> I would like, you know, I, I know that Peep Show has gotten quite a bit of attention, both positive and some negative, but 
not very much negative, mostly positive. So I was wondering if you could talk about the genesis of that and what it represents in, in your story. Sure, because this is a safe place and you guys are safe people. Yes. Um, so first of all, I think it's worth mentioning that this case that this box is in came from Mary Fortuna. And Sarah, I know you don't know Mary, but in the Detroit art scene, Mary Fortuna is a really big deal. Um, somebody that I've looked up to for a long time and she moved to Traverse City and had a estate sale and I snagged this from her. So I wanted to use it. And I'm not even sure what this case is. I, sometimes it looks like maybe it was an old camera case because it looks like there's a place for film, but it just doesn't really make sense. Um, it did come with the light inside of it and I wanted to keep it that way. So with this bar that kind of goes up and down and that is movable you know, and it being something that you kind of looked into, right? Like, okay, you know, it lights up, it's light, it's cool kind of thing. But what I chose to put inside of it, um, the peep show. So I, I'm not sure if I've had this conversation with you guys as individuals, but a huge part of the abuse in my marriage was sexual. And part of that was my husband's beautiful way to gaslight me and would put me in certain situations that I didn't know I was stepping into. And for example, we were going to a Halloween party and it was like, okay, well, I don't really dress slutty. I'm not comfortable dressing slutty and I'm not sure what the fuck happened. And he talked me into being a slutty pirate. When we arrived at the party, I learned that this was not just any old Halloween party. This was actually a sex party where it was expected of me to swap partners. And I walked in completely unknowing. And so this piece is partly about, you know, showing up or looking in and not really getting what you expected, right? There are, you know, a bunch of humans taking it in the ass or whatever, however you want to word that. That's how I look at this. So that was in response to the shock that I had showing up at this party and being like, this is not what I signed up for. And then of course the gaslighting that followed was, well, we had this conversation and you agreed to this. No, the fuck I didn't, right? So this peep show is just about as much about the shock value as it is about being caught off guard. So I, that's what this piece is. And, and I gotta say, I love seeing the reaction of people when they look in this, they're like, oh, oh, we get to look in. And it's like, oh, okay, right. And I wanna make sure that I'm clear that this is not a sex shaming thing. This just wasn't my thing. And maybe if I had known what I was getting into, I could have made better decisions for myself, but that's where the manipulation comes in. So, any Thank questions? You. Yeah, of course. Thank you for giving me a place to say that. I did get the 10 minute warning, <laughs> so. Okay, anybody else have any questions? You wanna weigh in on anything? You wanna keep talking? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I was, I was struggling to unmute myself. <laughs> I was talking, you can't hear me because I didn't unmute myself. So this was, this was really cool. And um, in the way that you do, Melissa, you brought me some things that I needed to hear today. So oh, thank you. Of course. Thank you for that. Um, so were some people then scandalized by peep show is this why you had there, some feedback that was surprising at the gallery there were some who were absolutely amused and some who were absolutely intrigued and one who was scandalized <laughs> he actually well, let's say he came back yesterday and um 
brought a friend and told her not to look in it. <laughs> he should definitely not look in it. <laughs> that, that's cool. And that's, that's about the ratio that I'm finding when this piece comes up to. Most people are like, oh, that's funny, right? Cool. But right. That's what I wanted. And then some people are like, what the hell? It's like, I, I get it. I'm not for everybody. Right. And that's okay. Thank goodness. <laughs> Well, and, and isn't it sort of like you, as an artist, you, you explore different things and some things, I mean, it just, it, it's not limited by, it seems to me like it would not be limited by somebody else's values necessarily, right? I mean, you are a, like in so many ways, a very modest person. And so this is you being you and expressing something. So I don't really care what other people think about it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, okay, yeah. fuck him. <laughs> and it's taken, a long, it's taken a long time to get there, yeah. right? Yeah. As former people pleaser and perfectionist, like, and I, and, and I think that's part of it too. Like I didn't, and you know, part of not being able to is I know my story makes people uncomfortable, right? And I was very yeah. hypersensitive to making people uncomfortable. I didn't want to make people uncomfortable. I don't want to trigger anybody. But this is my truth. And part of that is standing in it and owning it and taking the shame and blame away. Like that, that's where I'm at. I'm like, no, this is, this is who I am. And this is what has affected me greatly. Yeah. And my kid. Right. And I, right. I a lot of that is they're still watching. So I'm going to show yeah. up and stand in my truth and hopefully you know, my kid and maybe somebody else's kid or daughter or, or somebody else has the bravery to stand in their truth too. I think it's important or I'm learning yeah. it. So, well, I love it. Thank you. All right. We have just over three minutes left. So if anyone else has any questions or comments, please feel free to unmute yourself and take the floor for any point any period of that two minutes and 58 seconds i've never known these people to be this quiet <laughs> okay <laughs> well oh, thank you guys for showing up yeah thank you melissa for being willing to do this so openly and vulnerably and honestly it your art speaks volumes and your story is important. And I'm so very proud and honored that it is shown right now at Pinwheel. Thank you. Thank you for giving it a safe space. Thank you. And you guys, thank you for letting me practice. Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it and we can sign off before we get kicked out. <laughs> awesome. Melissa, that was terrific. That was a really good presentation. And and um to be speaking when you don't have, you know, like faces and like eyes lighting up and all of the things, it's really really hard to do. You did a very smooth and calm and engaging presentation. And I feel like I know some more of your art a little bit better. So um, if this was the practice run, you're ready, sis. You're ready. Thank you. And thinking about it, I think I ended early because I edited out the bio because you guys know, right? You yeah. Didn't, I didn't need to tell you I'm from Detroit. You didn't need to know I went to this school. You guys know. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Thank you. Yeah, I agree with Janice. It was very good, Melissa. Thank Bravo. you. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> you get to do that now. Yep. <laughs> oh, I'm going to take the dog for a walk. <laughs> Talk to you later, my friend. All right. I love you guys. Thank All you. All right. Love you. Love you. Love Thank you. you so much. All right. Love Bye -bye. you.